My name is Terry Bodecker. I'm with Verona Systems. We provide um, structures, um, solutions for managing unstructured data and uh, human generated data. So really quick, I'm going to go through this pretty quickly, uh, try to make the best use of your guys' time so that we can uh, hopefully just have like maybe a chance for one or two questions. Um, I'll go through some of the security breach trends that we've seen recently, some of the lessons from the FBI, talk about finding the needle in the haystack, what is human generated data, how Veronis helps, and then uh, that'll give you an opportunity to throw things at me. So life is a breach, grab a towel. Uh, I got an opportunity to go to the RSA conference this last February down at Moscone Center. And um, something I kind of witnessed as I was kind of meandering between booths is uh, the attack surface is definitely transforming. And our, our approach to security is obviously transforming, as it should. But I find that we're focusing quite a bit on securing the endpoint. Um, the purpose of that, I think, is to secure the human that's attached to the network, right? Um, the most common source of breaches are not necessarily malicious attacks, it's human error. And that phishing attacks, according to Kaspersky, they're up 87% since last year. Over 37 million people reported being affected by phishing and malware attacks. So, you know, that's just what's being reported, obviously. Uh, Brent mentioned that the average computer has eight vulnerabilities on it. I'm sure even ours at home probably have some issues. So if you think about that, it's probably even higher than that. Uh, but the soft center, which I'll talk about here in a minute, um, as we talk about kind of the security onion or defense in depth, it's still relatively being left unaddressed um, with IDC reporting that 80% of all data in the digital universe is within the enterprise. So we're charged with protecting 80% of the digital universe, but only 1% of that data is actually tagged and analyzed. So that would be the soft center. And of course, we see numbers all the time. You know, I don't know if this really means anything to you, but it's expensive. It's costing us a lot of money. Doing nothing is not an option. So the security onion, or defense in depth, uh, is there anybody here kind of familiar with this model? I see a couple of hands. OK, cool. Uh, and again, this is where you get the opportunity to heckle me if you think that I've, I'm, I'm wrong about this. Uh, but typically, we see this as broken down into different layers. So we have policies and procedures, physical security, network perimeter, internal network. That's when we start dropping into host-based security, application security, and then the data, your crown jewels, your soft center. This is essentially where the attackers are going. They don't care about really attacking your policies and procedures or your physical security unless they just want to embarrass you. But they're after your data. So this is what we call at Verona's the bank vault. So well, I think that Efforts to secure the endpoint and to secure application security, they're incredibly notable. We need to do everything can we, that we can do to reduce risk there, but humans don't care about this. In fact, what your users don't see, they don't see the physical security typically. Well, at least we hope they don't. But they don't see the network perimeter. They don't see the internal network. All they see when they're working day to day is the bank vault, because that's where they're at. And if, just kind of borrow a joke from 2008, uh, the financial crash, you guys know the easiest way to rob a bank, right? You own one. <laughs> the second easiest way is to work for one. So there you go. Humans don't care about onions, right? That's not what your users care about. They care about accessing the data, and that means that they're going to do anything that they see as appropriate to get around your security controls if they prevent them from their legitimate access or from efficiently doing their job. So that would be like bringing the CEO an iPad. He buys his own. He installs it. Sea level, you guys are the worst, right? Because you don't care. You're going to do whatever it takes. Well, our users are doing the same thing. Uh, so doing nothing is certainly not an option. We saw that with the proliferation of Wi-Fi. Everybody said, no, we're not going to have Wi-Fi. All right, fine. I'm going to go drop 100 bucks on an airport express and plug it right in. Thank you. I have Wi-Fi now. That's what users are doing. And it's not out of malice. It's out of a legitimate need and desire to do their jobs efficiently. And that's our role in IT, is to serve them. So we need to get in front of these initiatives so that we can do it inherently secure. So did I call our users our biggest risk? I, do you guys think that they are? I certainly do. Typically, I mean, that's what we see. So of course I did. And I'm not alone. Uh, if you look at the Verizon, um, the data breach investigation report, hopefully some, if not all of you, are familiar with this. Every year, Verizon puts out a report, talks about the statistics in the industry, what they've seen. This is where we get a lot of our trend reporting for how the attack surface is changing. And what we found was that 
If you take insider misuse and miscellaneous errors, the two biggest categories combined, 47% of all breaches up there on the top right, this little cluster here. So out of that, 80% of those involved the accidental or intentional disclosure of sensitive information, and the majority of the time, it wasn't done at the sea level. It was your secretaries and your engineers, your average, you know, your end users that were accidentally doing the drag and drop. But how did they have access to that data to begin with? And that's where we go into the FBI's top five lessons. And this is really derived over the last 10 years of studying this and from the US CERT team. Insider threats are not necessarily hackers. So again, an accidental drag and drop of, in, of sensitive information to a public resource, that is an insider threat. It's also not a technical issue. This is a business issue. And we have to accept that it's a business issue. And a good insider threat program needs to focus on deterrence, not just detection. So that's user awareness campaigns, that's putting in appropriate security controls so that they can't screw up. And by the way, if you're with the federal government agency, this is actually required. There's an executive order, I think 13584, that says an insider threat program is mandatory. So if you associate with a federal agency, if you receive federal funding, if you don't have one of these, don't get in trouble. We've got to avoid the data overload problem, and we need to use behavioral analytics. So there's good news. Insider threats, they're not responsible for the most common breaches, not necessarily. But they are responsible for the most damaging of those breaches. All right? With the average incident about $400,000 in cost, costing the industry over $53 million a year in the United States. So we've got a lot of different situations that can increase the ease of an insider threat. The biggest one is over-permissive access controls, and then sensitive information not being appropriately labeled. And then the third one is the ease of acquiring that information. So we just need to find the needle in the haystack, right? Well, good luck. So the real problem is we need to identify what does an insider threat look like so that we can address that. And I'm just going to move through this one very quickly with just a few minutes left, play a little bit of uh, Where's Snowden. I can't say Where's Waldo, really. Uh, my legal team informed me that that's a, apparently a copyrighted trademark. So Where's Snowden is still up for grabs, though. So this probably looks like every single one of us in this room, unfortunately, taking stuff without need or permission, looking for things that we don't necessarily need, asking about things that might not be related to our job, unnecessarily copying data, maybe to thumb drives, laptops, remotely accessing data outside of normal hours. That's pretty much every IT professional I know. Disregarding policies, installing, downloading unauthorized software. Maintaining an unusual schedule. Anybody here work long hours and have a, a zeal for overtime? And hanging out with people who may want your data, you know, competitors, foreign agents, that sort of thing. So this introduces Veronis. Our mission really is to help the enterprise real, realize value from human-generated data. And what is human-generated data? Anybody here work with human-generated data? Probably a bunch of people saying no, but the truth is every single one of us does. Because every time we interact with a system, that's the gateway to the brain. That is human-generated data. We're not talking about structured data like SQL or log and SIM data that spit out of a machine every hour. We're talking about humans accessing, creating all of these different Word documents, spreadsheets, PowerPoints, all of that information, email. That's human-generated data. Oh, let me go back. So why is this a big data problem? Well, on average, you have one terabyte of data has about 50,000 folders. So that's 2,500 unique permissions each unique permission set having about four access control groups inside there with about 15 members of each of those groups. That's 150,000 functional relationships that if you're not analyzing, that's a massive amount of data that you could be capitalizing on to better understand your environment, where your security exposures are, how humans are actually accessing that data. So I'm guessing most of the people here have probably more than one terabyte. And I think I have like seven terabytes at home just in my own stuff. So this is really where Veronis helps answer some of these key questions. So you know, I encourage you guys to stop by the booth. We could chat about this. But we really answer questions around who has access to the data? What are they doing with it? Is it appropriate? Is the data sensitive? Is it overexposed? And if so, how do we fix it? And then, of course, what about accessing the data outside of work? Why should the cloud have all the fun? Why can't we leverage the data that we already have in a secure way and get in front of the problem so that our users don't circumvent our controls? 
So going back to the Wi-Fi example, if we would have just provided them secure Wi-Fi to begin with, they wouldn't have been bringing in these access points. Same thing with bring your own device, bring your own service. Veronis has been around for over 10 years now, uh, in operations for nine. We went public earlier this year. We have over 2,100 customers worldwide, 10 products, and again, we provide solutions for human-generated data. So my name is Terry Bodecker. Please visit our booth, and this has been the Human Side of Data Protection.